All right, this video is about the geography of politics, not the issues, not the controversial stuff, geography. Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the spatial distribution of political ideology in the US. And just like most other people, I was watching the election on election night, but if you're weird like me, you were focused more on how population and demographic changes in certain places and how that has affected how those places vote. Right now, there's a lot of movement in the U.S., people moving from one place to another, and that movement of people can have an effect on the political leanings of the place that they're moving to and the place that they're moving from. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at how population changes correlate with the political leanings of an area and how they change through time and how that relates to the economy of that state, and the correlations might not be where you expect them to be. And of course, the political media are going to pick and choose what they want to say, focus on the places that are negative of the opposite party that they support. If you watch Fox News, they'll say things like people are leaving these horrible, high tax, disgusting, high cost of living, liberal places, and they're moving to these beautiful, bright blue sky, conservative areas with low taxes, free cost of living, and it's all conservative. And MSNBC will be saying people are leaving these opioid addicted, methed out rural areas, healthcare deserts, declining life expectancy, no job opportunities, and they're all conservative. And they're moving to these beautiful, bright beacons of American life in our cities that are all liberal. But here's the reality. There are currently 11 states in the U.S. that are losing population. Try and find a correlation between these 11 states and political leanings, cost of living, or tax rates. And there's no correlation at all between these things. Six of these states will be considered Republican states. Five will be considered Democrat states. Some of them are cheap. Some of them are expensive. Some are high tax. Some are low tax. But it's not just the political media that are at fault. The financial media are also getting things wrong. So you look at Forbes or Business Insider or Money Inc. or WalletHub and they're saying people are leaving these high tax expensive places and moving to cheaper places with lower taxes. And say you're sitting there in Seattle, you're thinking, what on earth? People are leaving places that are expensive. People won't stop moving here. Or maybe you're in the San Francisco Bay Area. And like, I keep reading things about people fleeing California, high tax, high cost. But people keep moving here like crazy. Supply can't keep up with demand for housing. And then you look at some of the conservative states that people are moving to. Well, they're moving to the most expensive parts of those states. Like, for example, I'm in Tennessee the only part of the state that's really growing is Nashville, which is the most expensive part of the state. And the same is true for Georgia, North Carolina, Texas. No matter what state you're talking about, the part that is growing is the most expensive part of the state. And a pretty good chunk of rural America is losing population too. Rural America is pretty cheap and often has low taxes, but they're leaving there as well. So the financial media live in this fantasy world where people just randomly move to somewhere that is cheaper. People don't just randomly move. They're going to move somewhere if they have a job opportunity there. And the financial media are a great source of information for the stock market or diversifying your portfolio. But once they get into geography, they're out of their element. And just as much as you don't want tips on diversifying your portfolio from me, you shouldn't take geography advice from people in the stock market. First, I'm going to use Virginia and Ohio as a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. 20 years ago, Virginia was a conservative state. It was a guaranteed pickup for Republicans in the national election. By the Obama years, it became a battleground state, and now it's to the point where it's a guaranteed Democrat state. So in just 20 years, it's gone from safe Republican to safe Democrat. On the other hand, you have Ohio. Remember when Ohio was an important state for the election? It often came down to Ohio, but it's a pretty safe Republican state now. So things can change very quickly depending on the movement of people and change in the economy of the state. So what is causing people to move? People are moving because of jobs. This map here highlights the states where the high-tech sector is the largest part of the economy. With the exception of Vermont, all of these states are growing and have a very strong economy. And some of these are some of the fastest growing states in the country. The high-tech sector involves computers, but also high-tech medical. So stuff like biophysics and biochemistry and genetics kind of stuff is all going to be lumped under high tech. And high tech is the fastest growing sector of the economy for the country as a whole. But people in the high tech sector tend to be left leaning people. So folks involved with computers and scientists are more likely to be liberal. So if you're in one of these states, the largest part of your economy is luring left leaning people to your state. 
Now look at this map. This one highlights the states where the manufacturing sector is the largest part of the economy. Manufacturing tends to be a more conservative industry and the people that work in manufacturing tend to be more right-leaning. However, the manufacturing sector is not growing anywhere near as much as the high-tech sector and the states in this category aren't growing as much as the ones that are focusing on high-tech. You compare the population growth rates of these states to the ones that are more high-tech and it's not even close. So you often have left-leaning people leaving these states and are moving to states that are offering more jobs for left-leaning people. This map here highlights the states where the finance sector is the largest part of the economy. So this tends to be banking, insurance, and stock market kind of stuff. The finance sector is not growing as much, and a lot of the stuff nowadays is being automated, and some stuff is just basically the person entering a higher number into the calculator, so to speak. So of the 11 states that are losing population, four of those are states in which the finance sector is the largest part of the economy. So now look at this map, and if you're a political junkie, this map might look a little bit weird. The states that are highlighted in blue are states that are leaning to the left. It doesn't mean these states are liberal necessarily. Idaho, Utah, and Kansas aren't exactly bastions of liberalism, but all of these states highlighted in blue are becoming a little more left-leaning. The states highlighted in red are the ones that are becoming more right-leaning, and again, New York and Michigan aren't exactly bastions of conservatism, but all these states are starting to lean to the right a little bit. So now I'll show both the high-tech map and the political trends map together, and it's pretty obvious what's going on here. There's a pretty strong correlation between the states that are going the way of high-tech and ones that are starting to lean to the left. And this is further pointed out by the fact that Georgia, Texas, New Mexico, and Nevada, high-tech is the second largest part of the economy. And in all four of those states, high-tech is gaining ground on whatever the leading part of the economy is. For Georgia, it's ag. For Texas and New Mexico, it's energy. And for Nevada, it's tourism. And by the way things are going now, by 2030, I expect Georgia, Texas, and New Mexico to be states where high tech is the largest part of the economy. Nevada has a long way to go. The economy there is still going to be based on you going there to lose money, but high tech is becoming a larger part of the economy, even in Nevada. Now I'm going to bring up the manufacturing map and compare it to the political trends map. There's a pretty clear correlation here between the states that are leaning on manufacturing and states that are becoming more conservative. Of the states highlighted in purple, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama is automotive manufacturing largely. Missouri is mostly aerospace, and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania are more like other manufacturing. So now here's all three of them side by side, and this really highlights what I've been saying is what drives the economy of your state has a much larger impact on the way your state is leaning politically than anything else. So I'll once again bring up how the political media are going to focus on people that are leaving high tax states that are more expensive, people are moving to places that are cheap and lower taxes, but that just isn't the case. People are leaving places that have fewer job opportunities and moving to places that have more job opportunities regardless of cost of living, taxes, or current political leanings. So now I want to discuss California specifically since it's the state that gets brought up the most when folks talk about people moving from one state to another. There are a few things going on here. One, California is by far the largest state in the country, so by pure math, there are going to be a lot of Californians moving. Of course, there aren't many folks moving from Vermont or North Dakota. There aren't many folks there in the first place. But secondly, to echo what I've been saying in this video, it has a lot more to do with what drives your economy than high cost of living, taxes, or politics. A lot of folks that don't live there that don't know much about the state think that somehow it's going to all be the same. What's the difference between San Francisco and Los Angeles? First, they're about the same distance as Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, so they're nowhere near each other. And the economies are based on completely different things. So when the right-wing media is talking about people fleeing California, well, they're not fleeing Northern California. That part of the state is growing a lot. And that is the part of the state that has the high-tech jobs. So all the Silicon Valley kind of stuff, all the dot-com, the Google and YouTube kind of stuff, that's all Northern California. And there are so many folks moving there that the supply cannot keep up with the demand for housing, and that's causing it to be so expensive. Now compare that to, say, Los Angeles. The economy of the L.A. area is way different than the Bay Area. The economy of the L.A. area is based on Hollywood and manufacturing. But the TV and movie industries aren't growing that much because it's not like there are more TV shows or more movies being made. It's just that more people are watching them. And just like with the Rust Belt, there aren't many jobs growing in the manufacturing sector. Manufacturing is huge in the L.A. area. There are so many companies that it's cheaper to make stuff right there and then immediately put it on a ship at the busiest port in the U.S. 
So the Bay Area has the sectors of the economy that are growing a lot, and the LA area does not. So when you talk about people fleeing California, you're talking about mainly Southern California. So if there are a lot of Californians moving to where you live, ask them where they are from. It's a pretty good chance either from LA or Orange County. So now I'm gonna get very cynical here. So if you don't want people moving to your state, don't vote for the politicians that will increase jobs that will lure people to the state. So again, this is the map showing political trends of states throughout the country. Now I'm gonna show a map that's gonna really make Republicans cringe. Based on the current population and economic trends in the US, this is what I expect the electoral map for 2028 to look like. And you might be thinking, we just got through 2020. This idiot is talking about 2028. Yep. This is kind of the direction that the U.S. is going. Again, with the high-tech sector growing at a much faster pace than the manufacturing sector, areas that are left-leaning are growing faster than areas that are right-leaning, and eventually you're going to get to a point where the Electoral College is going to be heavily against Republicans. Liberals have been whining about the Electoral College for a while, and the only reason we haven't gotten rid of it is because Republicans think that it somehow works only in their favor. And yes, the last two times that the president lost a popular vote but won the Electoral College, it benefited Republicans, but that can go both ways pretty easily. You can flip a coin twice and get heads both times, but if you flip it a hundred times, it's going to be pretty close to 50-50. So when, not if, it gets to the point California, Texas, and New York are all pretty safe Democrat states, it'll be virtually impossible for a Republican to be elected president. And maybe after that happens, we can finally get rid of the abomination that is the Electoral College. You'd have to bring the military from every nation on Earth, every urban street gang, every terrorist organization, the Empire from Star Wars, the Reapers from Mass Effect, if you want to fight me to defend the Electoral College. But the only way we could ever get rid of it is to show that it doesn't just benefit one party or the other, it screws everybody. So those are some of the things I wanted to discuss in terms of the geography of political ideology in the U.S. and how it's shifting. And I love debunking some of the political media stuff. So whether it's Fox, MSNBC, or CNN, which has gotten kind of cringy liberal lately, but I hate hearing everything being turned into a political discussion. Sometimes it's just geography, or in this case, it's the sector of the economy that drives the economy of your state. I think I have a pretty good finger on the pulse of politics, especially in California, so I'm going to make this offer. If you're a Republican candidate for governor of California in 2022, hire me as your political strategist. Well, I guarantee you, you'll win. You can't be some right-wing extremist Trump-style Republican, but if you're a Ronald Reagan, Bob Dole, John McCain-style Republican, skin-tight Wrangler jeans, giant American flag, bald eagle flying overhead, Lee Greenwood playing in the background, military first, hire me. You'll beat Gavin Newsom and, hey, Gavin, baby, slicky G, hire me if you want to get reelected. You're going to have a harder time being reelected than being elected in the first place. So, yeah, call me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in hearing more about U.S. geography, cross-country road tripping, comparing and contrasting and ranking things throughout the U.S. Just everything kind of from a nerdy geography perspective. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.